and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some mono white angels. So the point of this deck is to just have a consistent uh, mana base for the most part, having the 20 white sources. You know, we should, you know, we don't have to really worry about like the two colors, like only having one color and not the other kind of thing. And uh, also by being a single color deck, we get to have some really nice utility lands. So as you can see here, we have five utility lands. We've got the Arch of Araska, a Blast Zone, and three mobilized districts to help us out as well. Um, so we got good mana, and then we have a good curve. We have a lot of two drops, three drops, and four drops. You know, like we're just trying to curve out basically each and every game. Uh, basically always want one of these two mana creatures to start with, and then we want to back it up with a Gideon and then a Johnny and and so on and just try to curve out hey veer day thank you so much for that resub here and uh, with that tier three sub again so we got a donation deck looking awesome um cool i will try that out here uh but yeah so we'll call this you know our, our angel deck because we do have the top end uh being supported by these angels in the air uh sp with resplendent and lyra Really stealing a lot of games for us. Um, Tamika is a pretty sweet two drop with all these people playing Nissa running around these days. So we can tell them to not be able to target any of their lands. So definitely like Tamika these days. Um, and yeah, we don't see a lot of Gideon. I feel like I want to play some more Gideon. You know, that's not a card that, that we really see very much uh, in the format. Uh, a card that I was a, a lot, like, that I was really high on. Um, during the previous season, and a card that I still think is pretty strong that we don't get to see enough of. So we're going to play some Gideons here as well. Um, we got Wanderer in the sideboard for all these, like, Gruel decks, all these with uh, big creatures and everything. Also, you know, really good against red. Um, cleansing Novas for the Nissa decks, for, like, the mana creature decks. If they, you know, flood the board, we're going to want a Cleansing Nova. And I also have some Immortal Suns for, like, Esper Control. Uh, where Gideon is still the 4-4 creature every single turn, even through a Mortal Sun. So we've got a couple of those in the sideboard as well. So let's give this a try. Mono White Angels. You can see this doing pretty well for us. All right, Veerday, let's see what you got. Rakdos Punisher Aggro. Okay. With Sword Point Diplomacy... Uh, risk factor. I like it. Yeah, I've, I've played, uh, you know, like this Rakdos burn deck quite a bit before in the previous format, but uh, now you gain access to Tabalt to keep people from gaining life, which is good. Like, that's this this deck can't handle people gaining life. And then also the Dreadhorde Butchers. Yeah, I bet Dreadhorde Butcher is a really nice addition. Looks really sweet, Verde. Cool. Um, here's the list in chat. All right, we'll see if we're playing against a Nissa deck with these Tamiks. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Gideon is a 5 5 with the Mortal Sun. That's a good point. A wall deck. And, uh, yeah, there is there is a lot of good 3-drops, though, you know, especially with History Banali and everything. So, yeah, a lot of good competition for Gideon, for sure, as well. Okay. All right, well, this just kind of looks like a, a beginner deck, or just... Not, like... Not ideal of like what we want to be facing, but you can't control that. All right, so Tamik distinguished advocate so it is a two two three flyer for two i don't really know why this is a flyer 
Like that's just a, you know, it's a human advisor. So it's just like to make here. So he flies. He doesn't seem like he flies. Just looks like a regular human. You know, it's a human advisor. Um, radical. You just. Um, how do you get. Like, you just have to play a lot and win a lot to be able to get to Mythic. I mean, both these cards are good. We'll lead with history. This Gideon matches up better against Wall of Runes for that one turn, I suppose, but getting the history out there. I mean, both of them are good to get out early, you know, with Gideon ticking up towards the minus six and history, getting towards that, that uh, third chapter. Hey, Sway. Happy Monday. Doesn't really seem like our opponent's doing anything here. <laughs> no, yeah, for for drafting, you probably have to, you probably need to spend money. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, sounds good. I have that deck saved, your um, your Jun deck. Why, why did you have Leyline Prowler in there? Or Izareth? I mean, I guess Izareth. You just want to be able to reanimate stuff, I suppose. I do like Bonder Revival. I do think Bonder Revival is a good card. Yep, that's why that's why we got the Tamiks. Uh to have something against uh Nissa. Okay. Like there's a Prowler was a mana creature that didn't die to cry the Carnarium. Oh no, yeah, Death Touch is good. But for three mana, you know, it could be playing I don't know, like Jade Light Ranger. Or Gruel Spellbreaker. All right, double history. Um, I'm on the play, draw. I don't remember if blue is draw or play. I think blue is draw. So we're gonna go. If I go like history three, history four, do I want Gideon on five? Probably not. Let's see if we find a two drop. Blue is draw. Man, what are what are these decks we're playing against today? Sure.
I mean, we're we're trying to play some some decks that are a little different tier two today. Um, I think this is probably the deck that, like, this may be the best deck out of our four decks for today. All right, hey, congratulations, Toxic Flames. All right, and do not want to trade the two two, like the two two knight for the two two other creature, because next turn and the following turn after that, the knights will be four threes. So we want to wait a little bit. All right, I'll go ahead and baffle again this pride mate. I could just play the Lyra. I guess playing Lyra is pretty good too. Hey Boot, hope your Monday's going well. So I mean, heck, this could be Settle the Wreckage, but so you know, we'll definitely play Shalai here first before combat, in case it is. And then I, I'll just baffling in the pride mate, I suppose. Tithe taker would shut down. You know, Tithe taker would shut down settle as well, making settle cost five. Hey, Telstar. Yeah, we got some mono white angels up here. We haven't had any competition yet in this league. Our last opponent didn't do anything. This opponent didn't really do anything either. Hey, Nidirac, good evening. All right, curving out, two through five. Oh, are there, are there algorithms that if you play Jank, you face Jank more often. And then I think my angel deck is Jank. Yeah, I am sad that uh, Lyra and Resplendent are rotating. I've really liked those two cards. Go, Gideon, go. Yeah, Shalai as well. Yep. Yeah. My angels. So only in normal play mode do they match decks. Okay, so not in... I march into battle as your champion of not in this constructed queue here. I will lend you my strength. You do not frighten me.
Do not fear. Fight again. I believe in Vigilance. you. It'd be nice to be able to play Lyra and then like attack for five lifelink and then like slam two resplendent angels after that. Alright, well that's gonna get bindinged. Which of course just goes back to their deck, but should buy us time. Look how far you've come. Prepare for battle. <laughs> Wait, Weedoc, why would you you regret the four color command angel angel command deck? My deck was cool. There's no reason to regret that deck at all. That deck, that deck was cool. Oh, but okay. Oh, you're gonna regret that how much it's rotating. I got you. It is gonna. There is gonna be a lot rotating with that deck. That is true. Come on back, Tithe Taker. You got some more blocking to do. I believe in you. Never done blocking. Are we getting Leyline of the Void? The only the only Leyline I saw was Leyline of Sanctity before I started streaming. Balding Yeti with that resub. Welcome back, Balding Yeti. Five months for sub number five on the day. That is perfect. Thank you so much. All right, let's mark this second victory down. And let's see what we get to play against here for round number three. Hey, ice up, son. Getting that Twitch Prime sub in there as well. Oh, maybe I'm, I'm actually one behind, aren't I? I guess that's actually sub number seven. Whoops. On the day, I was one behind. There you go, Wee Doc. Good, I'm glad, glad you're improving it and everything. All right, honor guard. Are they playing green? No. No, we don't want to draw the second honor guard against the non-explorer deck. Aether Gust. Aw, oh, poor horsey. Or is that a ram? I guess it's like a ram, I guess. Poor ram. Uh, one in a blue, choose target spell or permanent that's red or green. So owner puts it on the bottom, top or bottom of their library. Huh. It's a good card. It's a really good card. <laughs> Cram. Zombie Arist Aristocrats with Corpse Knight. Is Corp Corpse Knight... Is that the new black-white one where whenever you play a creature, your opponent loses a life? Or it's like a creature ETBs, they lose a life? If someone's losing a life or something? Basically all of them rubber. I mean, I, I always like uh, 
new, like whenever the new sets are being previewed and everything, you know, it's just, you know, for somebody that plays as much magic as I do, like, always enjoy having <clears throat> new sets. It's, it's like the best time of year getting, you know, that happens four times a year, getting like the new sets and new formats and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if it's worth it to play Resplendent Angel. Or if I just like play Resplendent Angel and they, then they are definitely definitely playing Kaya's Wrath. And then I have nothing. Okay, less of a chance for Kai's Wrath now. With the hero precinct one out there. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Trust me, you need to take a time out. So it's kind of tough. Like, I want to talk... Or I want to uh, binding the Teferi, but then the other Teferi will get rid of my binding. Life's a little tough in that respect. Could have really used the land here to be able to end step. Oh no, I can't end step, but it's no an Angel of Grace because of the three mana Teferi. Let's try this. Hmm. Well, this game's over. I guess I should have just played the Resplendent Angel out previously. Recolor cycle has some being some of them being demons and some of them being angels. Oh, it is oh how there's the Naya angel? Is that a three is there is that a cycle? You know what? I'm not done yet. Of three color cards. There's another one. I only saw the Naya one. I didn't see another one. Oh, there's a Jeskai one. Hey, Zephyrs. Here goes nothing. Yeah, that Jeskai one's a lot better than the Naya one. Every non-creature spell, you make a 1-1. One, one. Flyer, and you can sack him for red mana. That's yeah, definitely better than the... It's definitely better than the Naya one. That one being five mana and and everything. Hmm. 
Honestly, don't know how I'm going to be winning this. That go according to plan. Getting to ferry out of here is step one, though. Drawing like a, a Lyra Dawnbringer that my opponent doesn't have a removal spell for is probably the next step. That just bounces my binding, they get their Teferi back. I mean, binding's okay if you can get rid of... If you can get rid of both Teferis. Um... So yeah, Gravestone stops. Do we want Gravestone on our deck to stop Command the Dread Horde? I mean, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Alright, so this is 61. I guess I'll just play three of Johnny's. You know, I really do like a Johnny here, but you know, it doesn't really pair with Immortal Sun too well. So we'll just play three. Alright, let's try again. Got a bunch of spy glasses and Immortal Sun, so hopefully these can shut off these Teferis. I don't really want Immortal Sun in my opener, because you know, like it's it's difficult to cast, you know, at six mana. It's not something I want in my opening hand. It's something I want to draw later on. Tomik. Really hope they don't draw the other Teferi. My brow will keep an open mind. The problem, of course, being that they have Ixalan's binding, so you know, like they can still Ixalan's binding the Spyglass and. on either Teferi. Like the problem is if I if I do little Teferi, then they binding the big Teferi one and then they play big Teferi. Now I'm in a world of trouble. Contain your so I want to spyglass big Teferi again. To be honest, but Why couldn't they play Binding this next turn?
Why wouldn't they be able to binding the next turn? They have they have a land here. Cost four mana. Well, Tithaker makes the spells on on my turn cost more, not the spells on their turn. It doesn't just like make all their spells cost more. Just only if they try to play instant speed stuff. Such violence is upsetting. Okay. Um Yeah, this is it's a problem with having a mortal sun in your opener. Like we've talked about it, like need need the land drops to get there. Schedule. Hold that thought. Uh, so this this spyglass is on the three mana to fairy. The other spyglass was on the five mana to fairy. But binding got me. No, I was hoping they would just pass and they would not cast the cast down there because then they couldn't cast it anymore with Tithe Taker. I understand you are in need of some. I will lend you my strength. Wait, how'd they untap lands? Wait, how'd they untap their lands? Don't make another move. Wait, they're not supposed to be able to untap their lands though, right? Lands on the battlefield can't be the target of abilities your opponents control. Let's Is that just a bug? Part. Like Teferi's not supposed to, able, supposed to be able to untap lands. Wow, so Teferi should be dead, because we should have like the 1-1. One, one. Teferi doesn't target? It's not, how is that not an ability that targets? Because it just says untap two lands? Not untap two target lands? Hmm. Lame. Perhaps there is a peaceful solution. What's the point of this to me card if that doesn't work? So I can minus and grab another tithe taker. And then, if I do that, a Johnny's going to die. But so does one of their heroes. If I tick up, a Johnny could still die with one of their heroes. 
also dying. Heal. So it's might as well tick down this and get another tithe taker. Yeah, I mean, Tamik, Tamik does stop Nissa. I, I obviously know that. But I was thinking it was going to stop Teferi, too. At least there for a second. But no, it doesn't. Because correct. Teferi's uh, ability just goes onto the stack as um, an untap up to two lands ability. And then as it, when it resolves, you get to choose if you'd like to do that or how you'd like to do that. But it doesn't. Um, this isn't a fight you can win. But it doesn't target the, the lands before that ability resolves, so Tamik does not stop that ability. Keep up the pace. Yep, so one hero dies and a Johnny dies. Or, or not. If I didn't minus a Johnny, if I would have ticked up a Johnny, it would have been same same kind of thing. They could, I would have only had one blocker. They could have attacked with all their creatures. I could have blocked and killed one hero, uh, but then my Johnny would have died. Dang. Could have definitely used that land there. Hey, Rev Daddy. Hurry. I think the list worked really well. I think, I think it worked pretty well with the new Tezzeret list. Um, yeah, it's it's not perfect, you know. Like it's not, you know, it's not perfect. It's not like uh, super strong or anything. But I think it, it works and had some had some games like where it looked real impressive. Other games, not so much. But I liked it. Wow. The gods bless us in our righteous cause. Your light will cleave the darkness. Time for plan B. We need to move quickly. And that's why I don't like having the Immortal Sun in the opener. Getting it, getting to the six lands, and playing it, it's tough. If I have Gideon take that damage and Gideon go to two, then the next turn, if they just have a removal spell for the one one, which is pretty likely with Esper, they just kill the one one, then I can't, you know, then the Gideon dies. So this way, by blocking there, if I'm kind of assuming that I'm going to be blocking 
Anyway. I will lend you my strength. Like the following turn to keep Gideon from dying. I am not quite indestructible. I if I was gonna just block like this like this turn, my Gideon would be at three, so I just have to block anyway. Just played it safe to get the blocking done right away. Share in my light. Gideon was definitely good though. You know, Gideon took out that Teferi. Good job there. Your service. Life link. I believe in you. Blast zone's a pretty nice one here. I can, like try to get blast zone for four to kill this Ixlon's binding. If you wish for example. Now, I have just the trick for this. Yeah, Spanky. Yeah, we've we've been talking about spoilers throughout the stream. Um, you know, of course, definitely excited about them in general. Always really like new sets. And M20 is looking good. It's looking like what a core set, uh, you know, is. And uh, you know, we have some some good cards that are going to impact standard a bunch, like Disfigure, uh, Disenchant's nice to have. Same with Unsummon. It's looking like a good corset so far. I'm not ready for this quite yet. But yeah, if you want to talk talk uh, spoilers, make sure you you join the Discord channel. So the communities talking about the different cards and everything. There's a whole lot of different rooms, including a room for all the M20 cards. So if you want to ask questions about them, uh, talk about like how you know where you want to put them in whatever decks or anything like that. You know, I'll be talking. You know, I'm not in the Discord channel while I'm streaming, but while I'm off stream. Light will cleave the darkness. Especially in slow. You're gonna break out those white border disenchants. There you go. So the little Teferi in their hands unlocked now. And you know, with only three attackers, I can't. You know, like they 
I can't like stop them from uh, keeping alive both their things. They get to keep, you know, they get to keep one of their creatures if they want to chump block with Bell Hunt. And I would rather it be Narset here because I can have this Blast Zone on three next turn. They can get rid of their Oath of Kaya and their Narset and their Teferi now. You'll thank me later. And if I do it on my turn, the Gideon is indestructible, so I don't have to worry about the Gideon getting blown up. Spanky! Thanks for that resub there. Thank you so much, Spanky. So that's our eighth sub of the day. Stand by and watch. So I know I'm drawing a spyglass here in a couple of turns. Don't worry, I got this. So so far we've gotten rid of three big Teferis. And this is the second little Teferi, second Narset. A hero precinct one's really annoying. Yeah, I can eat the Ixalan's binding so I get the spy glass and I can play the other spy glass. But then my Gideon has one loyalty and Gideon's gonna die then if I do that. I honestly don't know if that's worth it to like have Gideon die. Um I don't kill this hero. No. No. It's yeah, it's binding. My sword is your end. We'll have Spyglass both the, the Teferis again. Because I, I think we can, even though we're behind here, we have the Arch of Araska still. So even though we're like behind on the battlefield currently. That was not a good draw for me. Yeah. 
That was a really bad draw for me. Right on, this might be a bad idea. That was really bad. All right, Lyra Dawnbringer. All right, Resplendent Angel's good. Resplendent Angel, good. Definitely gotta say Narset so they don't get to Impulse again. Just hope they draw land here. That's more like it. Really hope they draw land. They're not just killing my angel right away. Alright, so Big Teferi and Narset are the two names. Resplendent Angel. Lyra? Oh, it's it lagged there. Of course, I cannot activate the Archer. Well, I mean, I can, but I don't want to activate Archer Roscoe on my turn because I already drew a card because of the Narset saying I can only draw one card a turn, so I want to activate the Arch on their turn. I don't really want to attack the Narset, honestly, because if I attack the Narset, the Oath of Kaya deals me to. They gain to. Like, I can just draw a card on their turn. Kind of feels like another Othakaya. How many Oth? So that'd be their third Oath of Kaya. Alright, so Teferi, Narset, Teferi, they're all shut down finally. Or they've already like played all of them. They've they've played three of each already. They're down to eighteen cards, so it's like I need to find just one of my Lyras. Oh, we already did. I guess we did have a Lyra. Never mind. I don't remember that. Must have got Thought Erasure away or something. Um... So 
that keeps them from making another... Keeps them from making another token. Like, I... Not really saving a life. Very... It's, it's definitely good that I didn't attack Narset. Attacking Narset, like, we're probably dead. Oh my gosh. What am I doing? I was like, oh, cool. Get the land drop and then play the creature. This isn't the creature. This is a land. So if we... So after activating Arch of Araska, I'll have three mana on their turn. So I won't have, I don't have any like instants like for three mana that I need to like worry about like not playing the Silent Gravestone. Could have teamed up Mobilized District with Takali Honor Guard to kill the Bell Haunt. Can't do that anymore. Need a Lyra or a Splendid Angel. Never got it. I guess we're not dead, dead. We just gotta do a lot of chumping. No, I can tell this is this long game. I, I need a reset arena. Hey, Kurtash. I need a reset arena after this. Why does this auto tap a Arch of Araska? I just don't want to spend the mana to activate Archer to Apple, uh, activate Mobilize District. Lifelink. Well, good thing I did like the lifelink a few times earlier. 
a couple of times. I remember now doing like the lifelink. And of course, we can't attack Narset. And because of, like, I'm not drawing first because of discard spells. Like, I don't want to draw during their turn if they have, like, a Thought Erasure in hand. Hmm. It's going to finally do it. Still only one Resplendent and one Lyra this whole time. With 22 cards left. We can't find any more. Like, Resplendent or Lyra, just, you know, pull ahead. And I just can't, I can't find Resplendent or Lyra at all. Save the life of me. Yeah, we lost. Archivaroska doesn't do anything with Narset in play. Can't attack Narset. If I attack Narset, the Othakaya kills me. Just couldn't quite stabilize. Almost did when we drew the Resplendent Angel. And, you know, we made the 4-4 Angel. But then then our opponent drew that Othakaya. If we had just one more turn of Resplendent Angel, gaining another 5 life and getting another 4-4 Angel, that's like, you know, we, we get there. We needed one more turn with Resplendent Angel that game. Because cause honestly, our opponent was pretty shut, shut out. Like, they were... With, with all their planeswalkers, you know, not being able to be answered, or like you know, not not being able to do anything, and us already really turning through all of them, really just one more angel, like we, like Archivaroska, had that we just couldn't quite stabilize. We were so close, and they drew that, you know, like that third bell haunt or whatever, that also really hurt. You know, like without that, that you know them having the two bell haunts, they just had the one. Very close game, very close. I think if I, you know, obviously if I would have played the mobilized district that turn instead of the other land and used, been able to use one mobilized district to kill, um, to kill a bell hunt, I'm, I'm probably in there. But that was that was the huge mistake I made. All right, do we get the dream scenario of land and then Dawnbringer? Hey, Top Hat. Good afternoon. We did it. We did it. I'll sacrifice this one. Yep, important thing, learn from the mistakes. Yep. All right, so we have an explore deck. Well, 
undefeated. So let's go with um, some more baffling ends, a couple of cleansing novas, and a couple of immortal suns. Spyglass over binding. Like Vivian is a card that I'm certainly worried about. Yeah, Spyglass over binding. Just want to shut off Vivian. Not playing a Johnny is kind of weird whenever we have Honor Guard and a Johnny gets back Honor Guard. I think that's probably incorrect for me not for me to be taking out a Johnny. I'm going to take out... Uh, I'm going to keep in two of Johnny's and take out a, two Tithe Taker? Yeah, two Tithe Takers instead. This curve is really high. I probably should be cutting the Angel to Grace. Instead of one of the other Tithe Takers, but I'm running out of time. Oh, I guess they could be a Command the Dreadhorde deck, couldn't they? So I could have uh, Silent Gravestone in there. I was thinking, you know, I thought about Find Finality, how Silent Gravestone would stop find the find part of Find Finality. But yeah, I guess it could just be Command the Dreadhorde. Who knows what they're doing, though? Alright, that was a very quick History of Benalia take. Not even looking at this Cleansing Nova. Why would they not want Midnight Reaper if I just have this Cleansing Nova here that I'm representing? Wouldn't Midnight Reaper be a really good card to have? I mean, I don't need to try to, like, hide it or anything. Like, the opponent knows about it. It's right there. I think I think I like uh, the gravestone more than sent Sentinel Totem. Uh, gravestone stopping rekindling Phoenix as well. Kind of had a feeling that my opponent was going to be attacking into this Angel of Grace. Angel of Grace was known information. Same with the Cleansing Nova the turn before.
Wait, so there's a... Matthew, is that a, a real card? Oath of Garuk? Does that mean that Garuk is in this set? I've missed Garuk. Oh, okay. That was not... Okay. Carnage Tyrant. Well, I guess... I mean, the, the Spyglass is for Vivian, but we have the Immortal Sun to shut down Vivian, but I guess I'm still going to name Vivian in case something happens. You know, like an Assassin's Trophy or whatever. All right, three and one. Bum, 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 bum. Alright, looks good, looks good. Just realized that Demir Tesserator wasn't quite up on YouTube, so put that up there. So there's a problem with putting the Temple Gardens in your mono white deck, is we do we were forced to take t two damage here in order to do that, and it looks like we'll maybe be forced to take four damage. That's all said and done. may need to binding this steamkin. I can also play like a Johnny, get back to Meek, play another history. But I, I'm kind of feeling bind the steamkin. I don't know, we need to stay alive till we get to Lyra. No cards in hand. I guess against no cards in hand, the best play is honestly just playing this other history here and getting the shock land in now so that, uh, you know, hope, hopefully it's, uh, I think I was going to say, hopefully it's not, you know, hopefully we could have blocked this steamkin there. 
All right, so we have to double chomp. But it keeps us alive, though. They would have just drawn a land there, it would have been a lot nicer for us. We gotta draw a land here. Because if not, I'm dead. Need a land. No, not the land. All right, baffling ends, wanderer, uh, another binding. I don't know about Nova. Nova would have been like really nice to have there that last game. We saw how that, that game kind of played out. I don't know if we really want it too much though. Gideon is certainly out. And a Johnny. Maybe one Nova. No, maybe no Novas. Nah, no Nova. Let's keep a one of Johnny in here. All right, give it another try. Well, yeah, so... Yes, I could have blocked the Steamkin whenever it was a 4-4, uh, for sure, and kept it from activating mana. I certainly didn't think that they had another Chain Whirler in hand. Because if that's me, I think I'm just playing... I would have just played the Chain Whirler. Like, I was kind of surprised they didn't just like play the Chain Whirler... Um, before combat, and they they dealt they deal two less damage with Steamkin, yes, but they but they kill my blocker and they deal one more damage than with the one two, and the one two also doesn't die, so they deal they would have dealt one less damage, but they would have also been able to keep the one two. So that's so I, I didn't I wasn't expecting an, a second chain whirler for one of their last cards because I would have thought they would have just played a pre uh, pre combat. Jelly Tug! Spent many hours in bed in the hospital the past few months due to physical illness. Just want to thank you for the countless hours of entertainment and awesome community that we have here. Love you all. Oh, we love you too, Jelly Tug. I hope life is getting better for you. I hope it's looking up. You know, hope you're sticking in there and everything. And, you know, glad to have you here. Really looking forward to Tamiyo Dredge. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how you know how how Tamiyo Dredge fares. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm saving the binding because of Frenzy, Chandra. Chandra, I guess I'm not so worried about, but Frenzy. If I would not have drawn the Shalai, I would have I definitely just binding the Steamkin if I would not have drawn Shalai there. But since we drew Shalai, we'll just play that and save binding. So they have all the mana they could possibly want for those three cards. Firebrand's a burn spell. As far as Shalai goes. Alright, there's a Frenzy. I do not want to see more burn spells. And there's a burn spell. Yeah, we got crazy decks today. Good, things have improved drastically the past two weeks. That's awesome. Good. Good, good, good.
Why am I not playing Ugin in the in the Tezzeret deck? I don't know. Ugin. Ugin costs six mana. You have like a a limit of six mana cards that you should be putting in your deck. We already have three with the Tezzerets. Maybe they have a land and a frenzy in hand. Nope. This is where we need to draw that Lyra Dawnbringer again. Or that cleansing Nova that I didn't actually bring in. That's lethal. I'm gonna block two things, but we take four. All right. Unfortunate for a mono white angels deck, losing there to mono red. That's a matchup that you know we want to be facing. To be honest, all right. So about those games, uh, game one, our our opponent had, you know, they they kind of did their mono red thing and and curved out really really well. Um, and you know, I played, I played Dawnbringer on turn five and I, and I died. So that's, you know, th those are tough games. Uh, but then post board, bring in like more baffling ends that are really important for Steamkin and everything. My hand was certainly a mulligan. Like that game too, I, I lost cause I didn't mulligan my hand. Like I had like five lands and two honor cards. Like, why am I keeping that? That was not a, that was not a good enough hand. Um at all so that's why I lost that game too um, certainly should mulligan you know we have we need we have the four baffling ends for a reason we need them to deal with steamkin and I didn't have like Dawnbringer or anything yeah I didn't I didn't have Dawnbringer in my hand or baffling end should just be mulliganing that but oh well so that's mono white angels uh, wasn't a very good league overall we had like some, you know, some non games that you know we just got some wins from some people not really playing decks. They had that that one against Mono Red, which I don't, you know, like Mono Red. I think I, I'd be willing to, to play that matchup quite a bit, and you know, think we're winning more than half of them with this deck. But I, I should not have kept that game too. Then we had that really good match against Esper, though. We had one really good match in there. Um, the really nice long game against Esper. That was a fun one. But there we go, Mono White Angels. Uh, so if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it, uh, even though we didn't get to really uh, showcase our deck too much, unfortunately, here. Um, but hope hoped you liked the videos, and uh, uh, if, you d if you did, please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But thank you so much for watching Mono White Angels, and I will...